Well, hey neighbors, welcome to Matthew Shed Shop. Um, I have a slew of videos I really want to get to YouTube, but it, it's a matter of of having the time. And <clears throat> um, so I'm just as I'm I'm puttering around and tinkering around about the shop, I'm thinking of different little things I can shoot videos for for you guys and what kind of content we can put out. Um, and as I work on these MS two fifties and O twenty fives that I've been working on. Uh, putting everything together for uh, several weeks now um, in between other stuff because this is my stuff but I, I try to focus on the neighbor stuff that I have here first um, I, I'd like to go ahead and make this video about how do I know if I need to replace my crankshaft bearings on my chainsaw um, and I think this applies to bearings uh, across multiple things you guys um, when you have a crankshaft bearing, now I'm using the front facing camera because I want you guys to be able to see. So let's drop you down here. When you have a, a crankshaft bearing, um, and it comes in brand new and, and, and I'm going to go by logical denomination. You guys remember I'm a guy in a shed, um, that taught himself how to work on chainsaws. And I've, I've never had any formal training. And so all of my videos, I will say, don't, don't take my advice unless you want to um, it's up to you but uh, my disclaimer is this is just how I do things and um, uh, I, I'm not saying it's always right I, I'm a human being I'm not perfect and I may not always be correct and if I'm incorrect and somebody feels I'm incorrect please uh, go down in the comments and and with with kindness and love tell me you feel I'm wrong okay so I've had enough brand new uh, cross farmer tech Steel, Husqvarna, Proline, Highway, uh, random different Chinese, uh, bearings from Turkey, crankshaft bearings in my hand, and I'm a tinkerer, you guys. I like to, I will sit here sometimes for hours and I will play with stuff. And I have my OEM steels off of these O25s that are very old, and I think, boy, that spins a little easy, but it has no grease in it that is meant to be packed with grease um and i will sit here and i'll play with the bearings um on the crankshaft usually uh because once i've pulled them i'm not i'm not likely to reinstall them um we'll do new and i will play with them and what i want to do you guys i'll flip you around because i think the other show this this camera might show this better we're going to try and keep this video short because, uh, as usual, I'm struggling to keep the storage on the phone. But I have ordered a terabyte memory card. Okay, so now it's going to be hard maybe to see the, um, the, I wish this tripod went a little bit lower. Let's change. It might be hard to see it in between my fingers here. You're going to see my fingers move more than the metal. But that bearing moves. And that, that is... Um, a lot of play and you might think that's not normal okay look at this one this is a new one uh, this is a, a cross bearing um, and they're made in Turkey that's got play too and you might not be able to tell on the camera but I can tell by my hand after playing with these bearings for quite some time many times in the past um, and, and not that much this time but just a little bit um, because sometimes I'm like, well, um, do, did I really need to replace those? I mean, they're 30 years old, but when you look at the importance of a bearing, what we're looking at is is we want to look at top to bottom play, guys. And what I'm talking about is we're taking the inside of our bearing, right? And we're looking for play like this. So let's take this one that's got new bearings on it. And we're looking, can we take our bearing and move it that way, up and down? No, this is very tight. And that steel, those two steel bearings, I can tell you, are the same way. The inner, the inner wheel versus the outer wheel, um, it's very tight. Now, I know it looks like it's moving, but that's my hands moving. I can feel I've got almost no play. There's a tiny bit. These bearings probably could have been reused with grease. But you know what I say, guys? I'm going to flip you over here. You know what I say? Should I replace my crankshaft bearings? 
Well, if you don't mind aftermarket, if, if you have a, a trusted aftermarket bearing you can use, uh, I'm going to say it irrefutably, when in doubt, throw it out. Why not? I get these for, uh, well, if I buy them individually, I can get them for about 20 bucks a set. For one $20 bill, if you have your chainsaw apart this much, you guys, or that much, because to get it this much, you have to have it that much. If you've got your chainsaw apart that much, what do we say? One more time. What do we say? For a $20 bill or $40 bill OEM, when in doubt, throw it out. That's the way I work. I'm selling refurbished stuff here. I don't care about a $20 bill. Um, if, if I've got too much play in my stuff and my piston is moving around and, and burns up my motor, well, my 20 or 30 hours into that saw is all for naught. And I've got somebody that potentially thinks that to try and save 20 bucks, uh, I sold them a shatty saw. So I'm going to show you one more bearing situation here. This is also an 025 crankshaft. And we're looking at the rocker arm. And now I, I, I know um, you can remove, this pin is removable. And so essentially this whole part of my crank is good. It's, it's, it's the arm and potentially the, the needles. Uh, this stuff can be replaced. I, I cannot remember uh, <laughs> where in the manual they show how to do this. There's a general service manual still has that I have, but it's like 671 pages with like uh, questions that their techs have asked in the past and stuff that they put together. Um, and I have that manual, but um, I can't remember. There, there's a tool to do that. And it's probably in some of the regular service manuals too. But anyways, the point being, so I, I have another crank um, that I can I can make a whole crank out of between the two. And I would like to do that at some point. It's not a priority project right now. But look at this one, you guys. Um, first off, okay, look. Look how much that moves. Now, we're not talking about side-to-side -side movement, okay? We're not talking about this side to side movement. That is perfectly normal and it's supposed to do that, okay? What we're talking about here is uh, the look at how much that can go from one corner to the other, okay? And then not only that, hopefully you guys can see it. Let me change it again um, because I want you guys to be able to understand this stuff. If you were to put your chainsaw back together with this right now, it, it's gonna be all for naught, it's gonna be ruined. Okay, because what's happening there is I've got like maybe two mil of play, two millimeters, maybe more, honestly, guys. I think there's probably about two is my guess, but that is just like a crazy wild, I don't know, guess from having feeler gauges in my hands and stuff. Um, that play up and down, okay, this, this is 100% a part that you cannot put back in a saw, okay? That is not my fingers moving. That is the play up and down. That's directly up and down. Let's show you what a brand new one does. Okay. Um, this is a steel uh, crankshaft. It's not brand new, I'm sorry, but it's got brand new bearings and seals and uh, piston on it. So I say brand new, but it's not brand new. It's an MS250 and it's a late, a late year uh, MS250. So if we try to move this one the same way we just did the other one, I got to have that other light out when I do this stuff for you guys. Um, there's just zero play. But again, the side to side is 100% normal. But I also, I'm trying to I'm trying to bend this one the same way I did the other one. You can see it has a tiny bit of movement. That's completely normal. A brand new one has that movement. But it, it can't, it can't say, oh no, grandma broke her hip again. That's what I think of. Oh, yep, your hips broke. That's bad, you guys. You can't use that. Um, you'll you'll waste your time. Don't do it. It sucks when you get into a saw and find something like that, especially if you're a tinker that bought a saw to resell. Guys, I got boxes and boxes and boxes of stuff that I've been screwed over buying stuff on eBay and even lots. I buy big lots of stuff, and and you get saws in there that. Uh, you can't expect the guy to know everything about every saw he has that he's never taken apart. Uh, he's just compiled stuff sometimes. Um, and other times, yes, they are dishonest. But essentially, I've got boxes of stuff like this, you guys. 
Um, I've got boxes of stuff where Chinese top ends were on saws, and I don't typically do Chinese top ends. But in this series, since we're using the videos largely for description, uh, if we or for when we post these saws online, um, let's see, this is not the one that is very clearly a steel. Ah, yeah, I forgot I had card parts cleaner in that. We now, I'm not going to use those seals now. I'm not going to take a chance. I'm going to dry them off real quick. Um, actually, because it's not that bad. It wasn't that much. Uh, these chemicals are not good for plastic and rubber. Uh, parts, components that are going to be, uh, yeah, I just don't like it. it. It If that sat on there, it really could cause damage. As soon as this stuff touches uh, latex gloves, you guys, or non-latex rubber gloves, um, the, the gloves stretch out. And so, I don't want that card parts cleaner. I'm sorry, I forgot I was letting that soak because I'm doing um, I'm doing the, the the carbon removal, and that's one of the ways when I don't have time, I just spray very carefully a bunch of carburetor or brake parts cleaner in there, or I'll put CTS solvent down in there, and I'll just let it sit with an old spark plug in it, um, and then I can go back in a in a few hours when I'm done tinkering with putting my all my other stuff together. Um, I can go back and just dump that and wipe it out. So but we'll have to fill that again. Anyways, um, this is, I have I have discovered to, uh, what I'm going to say is a 98% degree of certainty. This is a highway top end. Now, I bought this in a lot on eBay, of course on eBay. And, it, and it's from a guy that a lot of his stuff was bad. Um, he just, he's one of the ones I think is dishonest out there. That's why he's using his mommy's account. Um, and, and I, I won't buy from him again. Um, and so, however, this saw, I don't know what I'm going to do yet. Um, you know, there's guys out there that are doing custom work and they, they back highway. Highway is not Chinese. I think they're, they're, they're from Taiwan, but they have, um, I have used one of their pistons in a 391. Um, upon examination and looking at the machine work, I, I was highly impressed um, it looked re really good, very clean piston uh, for a, a ported piston. Um, I was very happy with it, and, and it's performing very well. And in fact, the guy that bought the saw just messaged me the other day, and he says, "Yeah, the saw's been running great, um, perfect temperature. Uh, haven't do had to do a lot of adjustment to it, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. So I'm real happy about that. Um, okay, so that is it on the the bearing uh, video, you guys. Uh, we're going to literally stop this video and start another one as soon as I reorganize the stuff. And we're going to show you uh, how to install the crankshaft seals with no specialty tool. Please like, you guys, hit the thumbs up, like the video for me. Leave a comment down below. Uh, what do you guys know about bearings? What do you think? Um... What do you think if it, if there's any questions, should you say, ah, it's good enough or should you spend the money on some aftermarkets or should you go OEM? Do you guys think the value of the saw determines uh, your or impacts your decision? And then I would also appreciate if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, would you, would you please subscribe and hit the bell notifications so you know when I post new videos? And then those of you that are already subscribed, I very much appreciate you being here. And I hope you're enjoying the content. Thank you for subscribing and thank you for you guys' support.